And we're now live. Hey everyone, it's John Klinghammer for the Kansas City Symphony Musicians. Um, and we're going to chat with cellist Meredith McCook tonight uh, about all things cello. And I'm going to find her as soon as she hops on here. Um, this is, I think that's the fifth interview we've done with uh, KCS Musicians uh, this fall. Just chatting with them about, you know, their beginnings in music and great memories and stories. Oh, hang on. Let's see. Ooh. Pause. I'm chatting with Meredith to try to get her on here. Feel free to, uh, if you're looking at this in the archives, you can fast forward a little bit. There she is. Connecting, da da. Oh, you're sideways. Oh, I am. Turn your oh, okay. Clock. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Let me rearrange, and then I'll get back on. No worries. It's not like a uh, iMovie. You always turn yourself sideways, but for Instagram, of course, we're always up and down. Thanks uh, for joining us, everyone, as you join. There's questions. You can uh, ask Mer Meredith questions or ask any question you want um, over, in, over in stories. You can do that if you've got a question. Or you can just type it right in here uh, in the feed, and we will try to answer anything you're curious about. Um, Hi, KC Symphony. <laughs> I waved at the entire Kansas City Symphony just now. All right. Well, well, Meredith's feed is not quite happening yet. Let's see. All right. Okay, it should work in a second here. Yes, connecting. Yes. We did it. Victory over the <laughs> internet once again. The second feat of the night will be trying to get my dog to be quiet. <laughs> oh, you know, honestly, based on the amount of response we get from people when anything related to pets comes on, I think it's it's fine. <laughs> if the dogs want to be involved, you know, that's okay. So how are you? Good. Um, I'm getting a lot of echo, so let me try putting it on Wi-Fi. Maybe that'll be faster. Uh, echoes. Yeah, maybe. You sound fine over here. Are you on your computer? Oh, ooh. Mm. We're having an internet issue, you guys. Hmm. <laughs> See if we can figure this out. Sorry, everyone. Let's see if we can get Meredith on here correctly. <laughs> That's good to know. I think it's just on Merit of the Send. It sounds fine to me as well. We'll try that again. The reviews are in from the audience, and they say there's no echo. So let's see. She just got a new house. Maybe uh, the internet hasn't made it out there yet. Always possible. <laughs> While we're waiting.
This is super monkey here. Oh, there she is again. <laughs> Sorry. It it's all right. Are you on your phone? I'm on my phone. Is okay, it better good. on the computer? Yeah, no, it's better on the phone for sure. Okay, okay. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. No, it's okay. Was that just like an internet glitch or something? I don't know. I'm on Wi-Fi now and there's no echo on my end. I don't... Okay, <laughs> good. There was, nobody else heard an echo, so that was... Uh, That's good. <laughs> all happening out there. All right. Nice we can get see started you. now. We can get started. Good <laughs> to see you. Thank you for joining us here on uh, the Kansas City Symphony uh, Musicians Instagram. Um, so Meredith, I love asking people about musical beginnings. Can you tell us when you started the cello, why you chose the cello? Did you choose the cello? Like, how did it all come to be? Yeah, um, so I didn't start cello until I was 11 years old. Wow. Um, it was not my first instrument. I started piano when I was five. Um, definitely not as serious of a student, but I was kind of, I did a lot of different activities growing up. I did like piano, ballet, soccer, basketball, all of the things. And cello was like middle school age. And then um, I kind of chose the cello because my dad um, played cello um, growing up and through college kind of immaturely. And we had a couple of cellos sitting around the house and um, yeah, it was just kind of there for me. And I decided to choose that instrument. <laughs> so you said, Im you say he played immaturely or you chose immaturely because. Oh, oh no. He played like as an amateur. Through as an amateur. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you said yeah. he played immaturely. Yeah. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. So he played okay. through college um, just kind of for fun and. Um, had a couple of cellos just sitting around the house and yeah, that was kind of how that happened. <laughs> that's, that's cool. 11 is late for, for any string player. I feel like that's yeah. like a, that's like a band, you know, all of us, we started when we were 11. That's like yeah. That. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was definitely later than some of my friends, you know, who started when they were three or five, but I think it was helpful to have piano as a background just in terms of reading music and all that so sure i was gonna ask you i took piano for two years when i was like seven and i, I really didn't like it very much but i do feel like one once i started playing the clarinet all of a sudden a lot of stuff was easy for me that yeah. maybe wouldn't have been yeah it was definitely helpful and i don't know i have a few students who like, you know, I haven't ever taught somebody like from square one where you're having to teach them music and all of that. So props to all of the right. music teachers <laughs> out there because I don't even know where to begin with all of that stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> and then how old were you when, would you say when you thought, maybe I'll be a cellist, like maybe this is what I'm gonna do? Um, I was probably in high school um, because, like ah. I said, I was, um, you know, I was doing a lot of activities growing up and eventually you kind of have to start paring down on things and you can't be doing everything. So, um, yeah, I was in I was in high school and I also like didn't really know what else to do as a college major. So that was kind of the easy option, not easy, but that was like the obvious option for me because I don't know at a certain point I guess you have to kind of decide like what your strengths are and what you're interested in pursuing so yeah it was probably high school age and at that age were you pretty much like I'm <laughs> this is what I'm good at like I should do this kind of yeah that's yeah. that's kind of where I was at I mean I was better at cello than probably any of than definitely than piano <laughs> I dropped off piano I think I stopped taking lessons at a certain point in high school, which I wish I had kept taking it for longer because <laughs> I, I don't play as much as I, as I should now, but I've been talking about getting a piano recently. So hopefully that'll happen eventually just to have yeah. for fun. But yeah. So I don't know. It's always kind of a, a difficult, I don't know. It, it's, I mean, there's a lot of people like, trying to decide like what you want to study in school and that was just kind of like the thing for me that I was like oh well I like playing cello so why not <laughs> uh, 
it took me a long time. I had to be convinced like by many people along the way for like, before I finally was like, okay, maybe, maybe I'll do yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And you went, to, you went to North Texas, right? Yeah. So um, I actually started, I did two years at Northwestern University in Chicago. Oh, okay. And then I transferred to North Texas, finished undergrad there. Um, and then I went to Manhattan School of Music for master's for two years. Can you remind me, I saw that North Texas is like the mean green. Is yeah. That, do they also have a mascot that's like the scrawny eagle or something? I don't know about the scrawny you know, eagle. They, I, they, I, think so I was just looking this I was up scrawny. and there was, a, there was a mascot that was like a really funny. Uh, I don't I'll, know about a scrawny eagle. I know they're the eagles, but I, okay, they are the eagles. But I did not go to a lot of sports games in the two I years. I should have done my research on that. I'll, yeah. I'll get back to you. And so then you went to Manhattan School and then um, New World Symphony, right? Mm -hmm. Which is such a big, like so many, in, a, in the Kansas City Symphony in particular, there are a ton of New World alums. New World mm -hmm. Symphony, for anyone out there that might not know, is a training orchestra for pre-professional, like really talented pre-professional orchestral musicians. What do you think is the is the thing that you got out of that that was the most valuable? Is it really just the experience of actually like playing in an orchestra as if it, it's a job kind of thing and going through a lot of rep and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, it was it was like an all encompassing sort of amazing learning experience. I was there for four years and straight out of masters and um, I didn't really know what I was getting into when I moved down there. I was like, oh, Miami, that sounds fun. And <laughs> it was great to like be getting paid to do, um, you know, something music related. But then when, once I was there, I mean, honestly, it's just such a great learning experience. They had, you know, like some of the best players, teachers, coaches all, all over the country coming in, giving us lessons. And then, yeah, we were doing concerts every week. Um, similar to how it would be in a professional setting. So that was a really good learning experience, like you said, for learning rep. Um, but it was just, I don't know, it was an amazing sort of learning experience for many reasons. So, yeah. And it's, it's like so important to hear, like you say, great, great soloists are coming to play with the New World Symphony, right? And you're playing with a group of peers from around the country, just hearing people that play so well it makes a big difference mm -hmm. to you I think, mm -hmm. right yeah it was really inspiring and i mean they also had a lot of um non-playing opportunities just in terms of like kind of shaping you as a person and and as a musician like i don't know it's obviously become more apparent throughout all this pandemic that we can't just sit in our chairs in an orchestra <laughs> like not talk we to can't people. Right, can't right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. So, I mean, it was just more about, for me, sorry, there's the dog. There you go. <laughs> it was more about, you know, just learning, like, what all is out there, like, how you have to be more of a citizen as a musician and not just kind of, like, coast through things as, and I'm not trying to, like, rag on that sort of, um, perspective on the job because obviously you have to come and like be prepared and play well and all of that but I think that like I mean to stay relevant right now you have to kind of be doing all these extra things to stay connected with our audiences and just stay relevant and interesting out mm -hmm. there with people so yeah. yeah and especially not like I don't know I get the feeling now I've had so many more interactions with you know, people in the community just based on the kind of stuff we have to do now because mm -hmm. we're outside performing for small groups and, mm -hmm. but it's so appreciated, you know, it's, it, and it's, you think, well, wow, we, we should probably squeeze a little more of this in when we, when we get back to regular life. I think. Yeah. Regular life. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Um, and so, uh, I want. I'm just curious. Have you taken a lot? Had you taken a lot of auditions before you got your job with the Kansas City Symphony? Yeah, I I did take a lot. Um, it was not necessarily 
the most fun process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was a lot of money spent along the way. But it, I mean, at the end of the day, it was worthwhile. I can't remember exactly how many I took. It was probably in the teens, I would say, mm -hmm. at least. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, like, I got really nervous in those sort of situations. And I got kind of lucky that there were a lot of auditions, like cello openings happening within like the span of a year and a half or two years maybe. So I was just taking like audition after audition after. And I like ha was fortunate to like be able to do that and have the time and the money to be able to go and do th that. But for me, yeah, it was more just about getting in the mode of like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I don't need to be nervous about this because I don't know, it's hard to obviously like when so much is on the line and you really want a job it's for me it's all it's all mental at the end of the day because like I was always like pretty much prepared but it was it came down to how I was playing at the end of the day so right and you're yeah. really like when you have those back-to-back -back opportunities it's kind of like you're you're grinding down your nervousness slowly over time mm -hmm. right and you're like <laughs> yeah it's I don't know it was it was definitely kind of a I don't know, I would say my learning process with the whole audition thing, like I kind of went like this, I went into this pit of despair and then I finally came out of that. And that's when I finally started advancing because in the beginning I was really like, I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of you're, you, you obviously do have to play really, really well. Um, some would say perfect. But once I kind of got out of that mentality of trying to be perfect in the auditions, then and trying to actually like make music and not just worrying about messing up mm. little things here and there. That's when I somehow started advancing all this. And I don't know if that's because I had taken so many auditions at that point or what, but um, yeah, it's, it's the audition process is not fun. It's not necessarily um, a good way of like hiring people in my opinion. Mm. But I mean, I feel really grateful to have a job now. And I respect everyone who's gone through that process and like has put the time in to like, you know, go in there and actually get the job because it's just crazy competitive. And I think a lot of people don't even know, like non musicians don't necessarily don't even know how much work and how competitive it is. They're like, Oh, do you get paid for your job? And I'm like, yeah. Yes, we do. <laughs> sure do. Or my favorite is, oh, my niece is a classically trained musician. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm sure she is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so that was kind of the key for you, though, was actually changing how you thought about, like, what was important to you to try to do at the audition, like to be musical rather than to worry about making a mistake and that made a big difference. Yeah, I mean, obviously you have to come in and you have to be prepared and you have to play in tune and you have all the things that everyone tells you. Right. Right. <laughs> um, but I mean, for me, it was kind of like, um, I think I was almost like over preparing in the beginning, um, like practicing too much. I don't know if that's possible, but. Oh, yeah. I think so, yeah. I think Yeah, sure. so I would kind of get too much in my head about things once I got in there, because I was like, oh, I played this excerpt, like who knows how many times or whatever, and then. It was more about, I worked with um, Noah Kageyama, who came down to New World a bunch, um, working on like performance psychology stuff. And he was having me, um, I just remember specifically, like he was having me kind of like rate my energy level on a scale of one to 10 and be like, um, okay, so now like go for like, I can't remember specifically the number he said, but it was like a higher number, like an eight or a nine or something. And it doesn't matter if you like mess up. And it was more about just like shifting my practice mode, like how I was practicing. Cause I think I had like a practice mode versus like audition mode versus performance mode. And so he was having me like amp up my energy level. Cause like, I guess my safe mode was more like, okay, this is, right. I'm going to like tone it down or whatever. I don't know. We're getting into nitty gritty. Yeah, I think like it's interesting. <laughs> I I, I remember ha having a mini breakthrough when I gave myself permission to lean back in my chair on stage during an audition. Yeah. For some reason, for years in my head, I thought I can't play an audition with bad posture. <laughs> like, yeah. even nobody's, <laughs> looking, nobody's looking at you, but yeah, I don't know. It's funny these little things. That... You never know. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Is like each person has like 
and there's no like single recipe that works for everyone obviously but it's more about like figuring out what works for you and even the same thing with I mean if you get nervous in a concert I think it's like I don't know I don't get so nervous for concerts as um, sorry <laughs> Lucy be quiet <laughs> but yeah I don't get as nervous for concerts probably as I did for auditions but um yeah so <laughs> how do you um along those lines like how do you deal with i don't know rejection or or like if you have a really bad experience either re i don't know review or some kind of criticism that really kind of like gets to you do you have like a strategy for dealing with that or yes <laughs> <laughs> dog time out hey Nope. Lucy is being a bad dog. Bad girl. Fun fact, I also just adopted a dog and named her Lucy. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Maybe so, she could make an appearance at the end. <laughs> yeah, uh, she probably should. So okay. your, your solution to dealing with criticism and bad vibes, go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> or what do you yeah, do? Like, I mean, are you just kind of be like, eh, whatever? <laughs> you know, really, that's what you have to do. I mean, yeah. you you take I, I I don't even know how many people I played for down at New World. Um, like so many amazing teachers, and they were all like had so many great things to say. Um, I think something I was getting kind of confused for a while because like everybody has their different ways of like playing different things. And I was like taking in so many things. And at the end of the day, um, I mean, you kind of have to like figure out what works for you in a way. Right. Right. And like something that like, like you don't want to be presenting a hodgepodge of ideas, obviously. So you kind of have to like it, but dealing with rejection and criticism, I mean, it's, it's tough, obviously you have to kind of listen and like mm -hmm. process that. But at the same time, like right. you have to let it roll off your back a little bit at some points, because like, if you get beaten down too much, then obviously <laughs> you, yeah. you're not going to be in a good spot mentally. And so you're, you're in this tricky spot where you, you don't want to ignore the information that might help you and mm -hmm. at the same time somehow not take it personally and be able to get rid of it when you feel like this is really yeah yeah I mean I got I got uh comments from a lot of auditions in the beginning and you would literally hear like one person saying she's playing too loud and another person saying oh your your dynamics were perfect or whatever you know so everybody <laughs> hearing, or like one person will say you're rushing someone says it was your time was impeccable you know so right, right, it's like right. what, what was it really everybody hears things <laughs> differently <laughs> but i i started you know like recording myself a lot in the audition process and that was i mean it can be very startlingly and terribly revealing <laughs> Um, but it's good, I mean, to kind of get a real concept on what's actually like coming out and then you're able to like fix the things that you would like to hopefully <laughs> in theory um, yeah. and then be able to present something that's, you know, rejection and romance is Susie. <laughs> <laughs> that's Susie's, Susie commenting there. Um, so, um, so you did ballet, you were saying you did ballet when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. Did you do that for quite a long time? Yeah, I mean, I, I did it probably from the age of five to like 15 or something. And so yeah. I had danced in more Nutcrackers than I had actually played before I started the job, I would say. <laughs> I mean, every Not year. Not anymore, though, right? Not anymore. Well, yeah, no. Now the number <laughs> that I've played has exceeded the number that I yeah, danced. Yeah, you've caught up. <laughs> but I mean, it, it really is like, I know like, we can get a little bit I, I like playing the Nutcracker actually but uh, it can be tough doing the same thing so many times but I do have like great memories of dancing in it and like if you actually watch the whole product together it's so amazing and mm -hmm. I know it can be kind of tiring like playing and doing the same thing over and over again in the holiday season but 
I would pay good money if they put a widescreen TV in the pit so we could watch yeah. it while we played it. Like, that would be great. That would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm lucky because I can kind of like look up and uh -huh. be, you know, over my shoulder in the pit, but. <laughs> All right. So I, and then this is, Maria always talks about how when you play the cello, you have like incredible posture like you and you Me? look yeah you yeah oh. <laughs> that 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 you like look oh, very funny. like calm and and kind of upright and and I'm just wondering is that a is that a leftover I assumed it was a, it was because you were a dancer that you I mean maybe I don't know I I took a lot of um Feldenkrais and Alexander mm -hmm. classes down at New World yeah. actually the Feldenkrais was really helpful to me um so I think I learned a lot in terms of like relaxation with all of that stuff. I don't know if everyone has um, done any Feldenkrais in any way, but it's it's similar to Alexander technique. I am not an expert on it, but it's worth Googling because it, it was very helpful to me like as a player, just in terms of like staying relaxed and it's more about like natural relaxation in your body when you're playing. But yeah, it could be ballet also. I don't know. <laughs> Combina combination there. A combination. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, all right. We're, we're running out of time. Let me check. I mean, now that there's a time left. Uh, okay. Thank you, Jennifer. What is your favorite section and why is it the viola section? Um, <laughs> somebody, somebody asked, what is your favorite movement from the planets? Big Holst fan out there. I've actually never played the whole thing. Oh, really? Um, I I missed. I think the the Kansas City Symphony recorded it like right before I joined oh the orchestra. But I mean, I guess I would say probably it's a toss up between Mars and Jupiter. <laughs> mm -hmm. those, those are the good ones. But I I want to play the other ones because. Hopefully they'll program it again once we're back. I'm trying to think. I can't, I can't, I get them confused. I think I like Venus a lot. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> Jupiter's great too. Um, can you uh, just talk for a second about um, your music box group plan for yeah. the symphony? Yeah. So um, I have kind of an unconventional group. Um, it's a string quartet plus a flute and a harp. And um I don't know exactly how this group was formed, but we had all played together in some form or fashion in the past. And um, so, yeah, we've been playing, I think we've played two concerts so far and we'll be all over the city coming up. Um, I think our next one is this Wednesday at 5.30 in Smithville at the Farmer's Market, if anyone oh, cool. is local here and wants to come. <laughs> Um, we're playing quite a range of things from pop music to um, one of the coolest pieces we're playing involves us strumming our instruments with guitar picks. So that's been nice. <laughs> um, interesting. Um, and pop music has been interesting. So. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. I lost you for a half a second, or you lost me. I'm not sure. Which oh. one. Um, yeah. How did you guys, um, I don't know if you just said this, are there any, do you have arrangements at all? Or did you just find stuff for that, that group? Um, we found a couple of, there, if, not surprisingly, are not that many pieces out there for string quartet, flute, and harp. <laughs> but mm -hmm. we found a couple of interesting pieces. Um, one of them is by a Uruguayan composer. Um, I can't, I don't know if this tuned in when I was talking earlier, but like we use guitar picks. Um, yeah, did you hear that? Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then for some of it, we're just doubling the flute with some of the violin lines. So it's kind of nice to have like extra, you know, oh, yeah. in the arrangements. But a lot of the arrangements that we are playing are for string quartet and then we just add in the flute and the harp. So that's been gotcha. fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So for anybody out there listening who doesn't know, the Kansas City Symphony is playing these kinds of chamber concerts all over town in what we I believe we are calling the mobile music box. Although I thought today we missed an opportunity to call it the Symphony Stagecoach, 
What do you think about yeah. that? It's not bad. And then we could have a horse pull it around. Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, but yeah, playing all over town. So look up the Kansas City Symphony website uh, for details and you can see, just find something near you and go check it out. Everything's free and open to the public for the most I'll go part. grab my dog for a quick appearance. <laughs> yes, please do. This is Lucy, I believe. She was Lucy. whining because she, she wanted to come out and say hi to everybody. You want to be part of it. <laughs> hi, Lucy. You did. Say hi. And John and I just realized that John just adopted a puppy who he is also, you guys have also named Lucy. So I did. did. I, I told them this while you went away to get Lucy to be quiet a yeah. second ago. <laughs> Lucy, is, Lucy is not, my Lucy is not home yet, so... Uh, we got to go pick her up in about a week. We'll have to she's, have a puppy play date. Soon. Yeah, she's a little bit smaller than yours. So I'm going to have to wait for her to grow up just a tiny bit. But. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for joining yeah. us and talking all about Thanks for dog. tuning in, everybody. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right. See you later. <laughs> Bye, you soon.